Millie and Molly like to do everything together. They laugh together. I don't know, because her coach was a pumpkin. <laughs> they played together. And they always walked home together. So, of course, they were doing something together for the class concert. Everyone began practising their parts for the show. Tom was with Humphrey, who had planned a really scary alien robot monster play. <laughs> it's not funny, it's scary! You take the low road. And Miss Blythe was teaching Millie and Molly a song to sing together. Before you... That's it, Molly, you're getting the tune. Don't worry, Millie, with a little more practice, you'll pick it up. I'm just not very good at getting tunes, Miss Blythe. Where me and my true love wherever want to run. Who phone. is that singing? Um, uh, it was Molly, but I asked her to. Don't stop. You've got a good voice, girl. Don't waste it. Uh, um, on yon bonny banks and by yon bonny slopes where the sun shines bright on <laughs> I thought Aunt Moore was going to be really cross. Me too. <laughs> Molly, why don't you sing the song for the concert by yourself? You're really good. But I like doing everything with you. I'll be in the concert too, doing something else. Well... Molly, keep singing. <laughs> But me and my true love will ever want to roam on the bonny, bonny banks of La The next day, the two friends told Miss Blythe that Molly would sing by herself. But only if Millie can be in the concert too. Of course she can. We need a very reliable person to work the curtains, Millie. OK. Now, Molly, would you mind staying after school and I can go over the song with you? But I always go home with Millie. Oh, Millie, you don't mind, do you? Well, I suppose I can go home by myself. Just this once. Millie knew she could walk home by herself, but that didn't mean she had to like it. But by the time the concert was only days away, Millie had to even eat her lunch without Molly. And Millie found the park wasn't nearly so much fun when Molly was too busy practising to come with her. And Humphrey didn't seem too happy either. This robot needs more red paint around his eyes. He's not scary enough. Ah! Please, please, please don't leave me, Mr Monster. <laughs> hey, Tom, stop that. Oh. He's not a funny alien robot monster. Ow. He's a scary alien robot monster. <laughs> but at least Molly's finale was going well. All her hard work was paying off. No, Molly, that was lovely. But I'd like you to stay back again for one more practice. Okay, Miss Blythe. Where's that Molly girl? She's practicing her song for the concert. Again? Good for her. You must be getting used to walking home by yourself. It was the day before the concert, and everyone was ready for the final rehearsal. And curtain open for the finale. <sighs> Goodness, Molly, what's the matter? Uh, my throat's a bit sore. And the concert tomorrow night. Oh, no. Molly, you must rest your voice. I'll call your dad and get him to pick you up straight away. Molly wasn't feeling well at all, but Millie was feeling worse. Hey, watch where you're going. <laughs> oh, it's all right, it's just leaves. That's not what I'm crying about. Molly's lost her voice and 
she can't sing in the concert, and it's all my fault. And how on earth is it your fault? Because I wish she wasn't singing. Fiddlesticks, that's ridiculous. Of course you didn't make Molly lose her voice. What she needs is my special cure. What's your special cure? Fresh honey, lemon juice, hot water, garlic and ground ginger. Uh. Well, it's not supposed to be tasty. And most important, you take it last thing at night, then wrap your throat up with a scarf. Maybe I could make it for Molly. When's the concert? Tomorrow night. So, Molly will have to take the cure tonight. You'd better get cracking if you're going to get all these ingredients together. <sighs> I haven't really got enough time. Anyway, it's not my fault she's lost her voice. All of a sudden, Millie realised that if she wasn't busy practising her song, Molly would now have some time to play with her. And here comes Nurse Jemima to look after Dolly in the hospital. There, there, Dolly. You'll feel much better after your big operation. You haven't been talking, have you, Molly? I think it's time for you to have some more rest. Will you still come to the concert tomorrow night, Molly? We could have lots of fun doing the curtains together. Mm. This is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Thanks for coming to check on Molly. You're a good friend to her, Millie. All the way home, Millie thought about what it meant to be a good friend. And then Millie knew there was something urgent she had to do. There wasn't a moment to lose. You can't just take one or two lemons, you have to take the lot. They're making a mess of my lawn. Now, I've got some garlic in my pantry, but you'll have to get ground ginger from the supermarket and honey from Farmer Hegarty. We've got some honey at home. It can't just be any old honey, it has to be farm fresh honey. But I've never been to Farmer Hegarty's without Molly. Hi, Beefy. <laughs> Lucky Molly's not here with me, cos she's scared of you. <laughs> Soon, Millie had the farm fresh honey, along with the garlic and the lemons. All she still needed was ground ginger from the supermarket. Oh, no, I'm too late. It's closed. Got any donuts left? Sold out. But I've got a one last gingerbread man. No, thanks. Um, excuse me. Do you happen to make your gingerbread men with ground ginger? I sure do. Thanks. Shh. You have to drink it all up, then wrap up your throat with a warm scarf. But they wouldn't know if the cure worked till the following night. Pleased to see you. Have you got your voice back? Molly! Shh. We don't know yet. She's been resting it. Oh, only time will tell. The concert was going very well so far. Tom and Humphrey, you're next. This is a really scary play called Attack of the Really Scary Robot Monster from Outer Space. Just then, Humphrey realised it was fun to be scary, but it was even more fun to be funny. Guess what, kid? What is that? from out front. Molly didn't know what was going to happen when she tried to sing. Molly, what's wrong? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Bye, 
yon bonnie banks and by yon bonnie slopes where the sun shines bright on Loch Lomond, where me and my true love forever want to roam on the bonnie bonnie banks of Loch Lomond. You take the low road and I'll take the high road and I'll be in Scotland before you. For me and my true love will never meet again on the bonnie bonnie banks of Loch Lomond. Oh, No one happier than Molly that night, except maybe Millie. She saw how happy Molly was, so she was happy. She wanted the best for her friend, because that's what best friends do. Come in, Unit 1. It's an emergency. Over. Roger, Unit 1. Describe the emergency. Over. <laughs> the police car's being overrun by kids. Over. <laughs> the policeman and his wife, who was also a police officer, loved coming to Millie and Molly's school. <laughs> For a long time, they'd been hoping to have children of their own. Hmm? Wait a sec. Has anyone seen my... What are these for, Mr Policeman? Uh, everyone, do you remember when I took the cat thief to the police station to arrest him? Uh -huh. I put handcuffs on him. Like this? <laughs> Humphrey! Yes, like that. Could you pass me the keys? Uh, no. They're back at the police station. <laughs> Looks like we're taking you to the police station, Humphrey. Are you arresting me? Oh, not this time, no. No matter Catch what, the two police officers always remained calm. Until one day... Excuse me, girls. Got to get to the police station. Maybe they're training for an emergency. I wonder if it's a real emergency. Maybe there's been a robbery or an accident. Attention, please. Attention, all town citizens. Can I please have your urgent, immediate and full attention? I have a very important announcement to make. I'm going to be a father! Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did you hear that? The sergeant is going to be a father. Oh, yeah. Hearty congrats and all. Millie, what present are we going to give the new baby? A few weeks later, Millie and Molly still hadn't decided on a present. Miss Blythe is making the baby a patchwork quilt and the fairy man is carving a toy boat. Aunt Maud's knitting gave Millie an idea. We can knit baby booties. Maybe Aunt Maud has a pattern. You, Oscar. Excuse me, Aunt Maud. Can't you girls see I'm far too busy knitting baby booties to be interrupted? It'll be spring before we know it. Now we'll have to think of something else. As summer rolled into winter, the policeman was also trying to solve a tricky problem. So the mat from your front door is the only thing that's missing? He had to think of the right name for the baby. Right. He was certain right. they were having a baby boy. Matt. His family always had baby boys. Matt. Matthew. Matt. <laughs> Keep going. You're nearly there. Uh, uh, Be careful. Yeah, 
Be careful you don't wreck my kite. Uh, here you are, Humphrey. Thanks. We can make the baby a kite. Yeah, a little tiny baby kite. Base to Unit 1, come in. Unit 1 to base? Is it urgent? Over. Yes, it is urgent. Let's call the baby Matt. Mm, sounds a bit too dusty. Over and out. Stupid kite, fly! If Humphrey can't fly a kite, how could a little baby? Oh. Um, then <laughs> what about a teddy? Molly, did you say teddy? Uh, yes. Um... It's a really nice boy's name. <laughs> Unit one to base. Let's call the baby Teddy. Over. Teddy? Sounds too furry. A teddy. Is it a lot of money? Well, you'll have to save up. A lot. We can do it. We've got weeks and weeks till he's born. Springtime came very quickly and still the police officers didn't have a name for the baby. Chuck? Nah. Eugene? Nah. Humphrey? Definitely not. Come in, Unit 1. Ooh. Baby is on his way. What's your exact location? Over. I'm parked in Albert Street. Over. Albert? Roger. Albert Roger. Hey, that's a good name. Yes, it is. But there's something a little more urgent. Oh. Out of my way! It's an emergency! An accident? A robbery? Oh, no. Baby Albert Rogers on his way! Already? They had a little girl. Didn't you hear? A little girl? I liked toy trucks when I was a little girl. But what if she's the same as me? I didn't like toy trucks. Not even yellow stripy toy trucks. So poor Millie and Molly still didn't have a present. And the baby was well and truly here. When the wind blows, the cradle will fall. And down come baby, cradle and all. Millie and Molly thought they might find a present for the baby girl amongst their own toys. No. No. Dolly, would you like to live with the new baby? No way! <coughs> the two police officers were very happy to be parents at last. And very tired. Oh. Yes, that's a perfect gift. <coughs> Millie, I've made a big lasagna for the new police parents. Can you take it over for them? What, now? Yes, right now. But, Mum! It's OK, Molly can go with you. The girls really didn't want to go to the police station without their own present to give. I know. I can go home and get Dolly and wrap her up. You could give Dolly away? Yes. No. Hello, girls. Got a present there for the baby, have you? No, it's a lasagna from my mum. <laughs> Looks like everyone in town's given the policeman's baby a lovely present. <sighs> There's such a lot of kind folk around here. So we're going to be the only ones who don't give the baby a present. They'll think we don't even care. Uh, it, it's a bit of a mess, but uh, Sweet Pea keeps us pretty busy. Sweet Pea? Still haven't got a name for her, have we, Sweet Pea? Um, where should I put this lasagna? Just over there somewhere. Maybe on the table? I'll just move a few of these presents. Sorry. Sorry, we haven't got a... <laughs> oh, don't know how your mum can sleep through this. Oh, but she's exhausted. 
I think I'll take you for a walk, sweet pea. She loves the pram. Um, Mr Policeman. Yes? It's still in your pyjamas. <laughs> I'm that tired I haven't even noticed. We could take sweet pea for a walk for you while you have a sleep. To Millie and Molly's surprise, Sweet Pea fell fast asleep after just a few moments. Millie, Molly, wait! Can you... Shut up, Maud. You wake the baby. I've just picked these spring flowers for the new mother and wrapped the booties. Could you take them to her, please? I think Mr Policeman's still asleep. <sighs> <laughs> and so is Mrs. Policewoman. So what do we do? We can't just leave Sweet Pea here by herself. I think I know what we can do. Molly's plan kept them busy all afternoon. Tidying up, doing dishes, folding washing, getting dinner ready. Until all that was left to do was to put the spring flowers in a vase. with them. <gasps> Am I dreaming? How did all this happen? We just tied it up a bit. We stacked all the presents over there. And there's a present from Aunt Maud. And these flowers too. Sorry, we haven't got a present for Sweet Pea. But you've given us the best, kindest present of all. We have. All this help you've given us. And you know, that's the best sleep I've had in two weeks. Oh, and you got Sweet Pea to sleep. Oh, look, she's still asleep. Oh, how sweet does she look with those flowers in her hair? Let's see. Oh, that's it. Daisy Rose. Not Albertina Rogerilla. <laughs> Daisy Rose. Yes, it's a beautiful name for our beautiful girl. It's getting dark. You should drive Millie and Molly home. Oh, and when you get back, you've got lots of phone calls to make. Who to? <laughs> Only to everyone in town to thank them for all the presents. As the policeman drove the girls home, Millie had another idea for a gift they could give by helping out. Attention, attention, please. Our police force want to thank everyone in town for all the lovely presents. We certainly do. Baby Daisy Rose, I'd like to thank you too. <laughs> <laughs>